A one-to-one -one relationship in database design. Today you're going to learn what a one-to-one -one relationship is in database design, how to represent it in a diagram, and how to know if you need to use a one-to-one -one relationship. This is a useful type of relationship for several different circumstances, and knowing what it is will help you when designing databases. By the end of this video, you'll know what a one-to-one -one relationship is and how you can use it in your database. So what is a one-to-one -one relationship? It's a type of relationship in a database between two tables where one record in one table is related to only one record in another table. It's not a very commonly used relationship. Most of the relationships between two tables in a database are described as one-to-many, which is where one record in one table relates to many records in another table. I have some other videos about that topic, but there are occasions where a one-to-one -one table is useful. So why would you use a one-to-one -one relationship? If one record in one table matches one record in another table, why not put all the columns in a single table? Surely it's more complicated to split data over two tables and have to join them in an SQL query, right? Well, there are two reasons to consider using one-to-one -one relationships in your database design. The first is if there are many optional attributes that only apply to some records. Sometimes you have a table with quite a few columns in it. If some of those columns are optional and only apply to some records, you may want to move them into a second table and relate those rows to the first. Another reason for using a one-to-one -one relationship in a database is if your data is being loaded from different places. Sometimes you'll be creating a database and you'll use data that's available in a different schema or a different database altogether. You may not have the ability to combine all data into a single table, but you can use one table for the data you control and another table for the data coming from the other database or schema. Let's look at an example to make this easier to understand. Let's say we're building a new application and database for a human resources management system. We want to store details of each employee, such as their contact details and salary, and we want to store their health insurance details. We've done some analysis and have figured out that our database table for employees would look like this. Our table is called employee and our columns are ID, first name, last name, position, salary, hire date, and then a range of health insurance columns. This could work for our system, assuming that each employee only needs to store information about one health insurance provider. Our employee table could contain this data. This table shows that we have 10 records in the table and only three of them have health insurance data. So most of them don't have any data for these columns and these columns are optional. This is a good candidate for moving the data to a separate table. So how do we move these columns to a separate table? We create a new table in our diagramming tool of choice. For my examples, I'll be using Lucidchart, but you can use whatever tool that you like. Here's a new table called EMP Health Insurance. We can add the columns that exist in the employee table to this table, which are just the health insurance columns. We should also add a primary key column, which I'll call Health Insurance ID. We can remove the health insurance columns from the employee table as well. Our database design now looks like this. So how do we relate the two tables together? In a one-to-many relationship, we add a primary key from one table into the other table as a foreign key. We can do the same thing here. But because it's a one-to-one, -one, how do we know or which key do we add to which table? It should work in either direction, but I prefer adding the primary key of the new or the subset table to the main table. In this case, adding the primary key from the EMP Health Insurance table into the employee table, which I've done here and called Health Insurance ID. Once we do this, we define it as a foreign key and relate the two tables together in this diagram. Now, many diagramming tools allow you to illustrate the different types of relationships, so you can see that a relationship is one-to-one -one or one-to-many, for example. In Lucidchart, the one-to-one -one relationship can be added like this. First, we drag the relationship from the primary key to the foreign key, and release the mouse. In this diagram, this marker here indicates that there's one record on this side, and on the other side, we have this crow's foot notation, or this triangle, which means many. We need to change this to one, so I click on the arrow to select it, and go to the top endpoint here, on the toolbar. Click on this, and go down to the bottom to change it to the same symbol on the other end. Now we can see at both ends of the line we have a dash which indicates one record. So that's how we diagram a one-to-one -one relationship. Here's what our data should look like now. Here's the employee table on the left, 
with the data populated. And here's the EMP health insurance table on the right. The health insurance ID field in the employee table relates to the record in the EMP health insurance table on the right. Now, how would you write an SQL query to get this data? To write a query to get employee data, it would look like this. Select ID, first name and other columns from the employee table. To write a query for the employee health insurance data, it would look like this. Select ID, health insurance provider ID and other columns from the EMP health insurance table. This query here, the one for the health insurance data, has no information about the employees. We can join to the employee table to show this data. A query that shows more information would look like this. Select e.id, e.firstname, e.lastname, then h.healthinsuranceprovider ID, and then a range of other columns from the H table. We're selecting this from the employee ID table, which has an alias of E, then we're in adjoining that to the M health insurance table with an alias of H, and we're joining on the health insurance ID column. This will show all M health insurance records and their related employee details. Now, because it's using an inner join, it only shows employees that have health insurance information. If you want to show all employees and health insurance information, regardless of if the employees have a health insurance record, change the inner join to a left join, which we've done here. So those are a few examples on using SQL to work with one-to-one -one relationships. Now you know what a one-to-one -one relationship is, why would you want to use one? We covered this briefly before, but here are some reasons you may want to use one. Does your entity have a lot of attributes that are optional? There's no rule about the number of attributes that would mean a separate table is needed. It's up to you. If there are one or two optional attributes, maybe leave them in the same table. If there are 10 or more, perhaps a new table is better. Do a large percentage of records not have values for these optional attributes? Again, there is no rule about this, but if 50 or 70% of the records don't have values for these, Maybe they go in a new table. Will some values in the table get updated more frequently than others? When data is updated, the database will enable a row lock, meaning the entire row is locked for editing while the update is occurring. This will only occur for a small amount of time, but it could be important. If you think this may impact the performance of the system, for example, if a large number of updates are occurring at once to some fields but not others, perhaps moving some attributes to a separate table is worth considering. If you have a distributed database or a database that relies on data from other databases, perhaps you need to use separate tables. For example, if your employee data comes from a HR system and you are developing a separate health insurance database, your table would contain the health insurance data separate to the employee records. This is because you probably don't have the ability to change the table structure for the employee table. If you learned something new from this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn more about database design and development, visit databasestar.com. That's where I share my best database related content. Which part of the tutorial was most helpful for you? Was it the process to create a one-to-one -one relationship between two tables or the reasons and guidelines for using a one-to-one -one relationship? Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.